everybody. Bonsoir tout le monde. Uh, this is Raymond James Irwin, Chief Champagne Officer of Fizz Champagne Bar Club Virtual Experiences. Uh, and I am so fantastically excited to have the incredible and incomparable Nicolas Gégel, the chef de cave, the chief winemaker of Alfred Crassian with us today, this beautiful, beautiful champagne that we featured in our club exclusively for our club members this past month. To learn more about our club, uh, go to fizzchampagneclub.com and you can learn more about that or fizzandsac.com. So Nicolas, bonsoir. How are you, bonsoir. sir? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, and you, you are fine? Oh, ça va très bien, ça marche. It's so good to see you. You're, you have to show us, show the, show the camera. I mean, I'm so envious of where you're getting to confine right now, your beautiful home in the vineyards. Where are you? I'm in uh, Roy, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Roy, but it's a small uh, uh, village, uh, but uh, we don't live in, uh, in the center. We live uh, uh, in this place. We have only seven houses around me. Uh, we are just in the middle of the vineyard. If you want, I can make a, a small tour. Take us to France because we can't get there any other way. Vous plaît. This is fine. And uh, back me is my uh, vineyard uh, because I'm a lucky boy because I have a, a small part uh, of vineyard and I, I, I'm the winemaker for Alfred Gracian Champagne. And that's, is, that the, is that the Marne River as well behind you too? Is that the Marne? Uh, no, it's just... Uh, not a lack, I can say lack, but excuse my English, but a small, very, very small lack. But uh, no, the the Man River is around uh, 500 meters from here. Okay. We can see, we can see. Yes, but you are in the the, the Marne Valley, correct? Roy is in the Marne yes, Valley. Yes, we are just in the middle of the Marne Valley, 15 kilometers near Epernay. Beautiful. So Epernay being, of course, the home, the maison from the beginning of Alfred Gracian, this gorgeous, gorgeous champagne mm. that we are going to open. Oh, and you have the 2007, lucky you, the 2007. <laughs> I, 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 I trust my bottle, excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, wonderful. So, you know, today, what I'm so excited to talk to you about, um, Nicola, is, is kind of the history of Alfred Gracian, what makes it so unique, because it really is a unique champagne house. It has a unique philosophy. Um, your family's history with it is also quite unique as well. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's going to be a really fun conversation. So I hope everybody at home has their bottles. And, and I think we should probably open it now. I mean, it's 11 a.m., which means it's, it's three hours past when I should have already been starting to drink. I mean, kiss me so for, for, for me, for me, it's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. Evening. <laughs> so <laughs> you're a little... Fine. Uh, it's fine to drink a glass of champagne with you for yes. a period. Particularly with you, Alfred Gracian, what can I say? I'm lucky because I am uh, the fourth generation of my family work for Alfred Gracian Champagne. My father uh, teach me 17 years because I, I started for Alfred Gracian in 1990. Oh. And uh, my father go, uh, gone, excuse my English, but uh, in retire in 2007. And uh, they decided to me to give me the key for make champagne and for uh, have a, uh, to have a relation with the world. Yes. Alfred Garcia uh, is in Epernay. Epernay is a very small city, but we are just in the middle of the, the best uh, uh, grapes region. Because yes. if you look champagne region, Epernay is just the middle of the Mount Valley of the Côte des Blancs on the Montagne de Reims. Yes. We are very, very, very small house production because we produce only 300,000 bottles of champagne. That's and uh, I have just what I want, just one, uh, just enough around the Pernay. We don't go too far to uh, buy grapes, not because it's not good. I, uh, my, my, my philosophy, uh, you, uh, a good grower is very important because you can find the good grapes everywhere, but Around the Pernet, we have just enough to have the best Grand Cru, the best Premier Cru, and the best Pinot Meunier for the Mount Valley. But I think you can buy a good grapes in Aube or in N. For me, it's not a problem, but it's very easier for me because we buy a small quantity to stay around the Pernet. And, and this I is think important. I think that's a really beautiful part of the philosophy of the house is really focusing on, on the place where you are. You're in Epernay, so you want to keep your grapes 
where you're getting your grapes, where you're, you're, you're buying your grapes around that as well. And, and it is beautiful. If people have been to Epernay, it's really the central point where you do have the northern part of Champagne above. You have the Cote Blanc below. You have the Marne going, uh, you know, uh, horizontally. And so you can get your Chardonnay, get your Pinot Meunier, get your Pinot Noir. And it really just creates a beautiful um, harmony, as you would say, harmonie, n'est-ce pas? Harmony, yes, but one thing is very important with the grapes, uh, because you know a house of champagne by the grapes. We have uh, uh, with own production, but this is very small. We have only two hectares of vineyard, and Alfred Grasson production is around uh, thirty hectares. Mm. Of course, we buy grapes, and one thing is very important, like uh, the man in, is in key, in is in his kitchen. Excuse my English, uh, but. Uh, a man-made kitchen uh, is it very important to have a um, very good produce. It's exactly the same for the wine. Uh, the base of the wine is a good grapes. And you must um, know Alfred Gracian Champagne for all Alfred Gracian production. We bought 62% uh, in Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Wow. If you buy Alfred Gracian Champagne Bull Classic or after Vintage or the Cuvée Paradis, we, we, you, you can uh, have uh, the Alfred Gracian philosophy. One thing is very important, good grapes. And after my job is uh, make the best with. The good grapes. <laughs> it's, it's not easy, but uh, it's not easy, but uh, I'm a lucky boy because I work with 17 years with my father and he teach me for all the organization. And uh, now, uh, I love my job. Excuse me. <laughs> no, we're well, and it yeah. shows. It shows in this beautiful wine. So first, santé to you, Monsieur. Thank you for being with us. I, I have to taste it. It smells so good. Excuse me, because for me is 07. I know you taste the Brut Classic, but at home I have uh, 07. But the Brut Classic is very important wine for Alfred Gracia. Yes. And I think it's very important wine, uh, the classic one for all house of Champagne. Yes. If you want to know and if you want to understand House of Champagne, you must test the Brut Classic because the Brut Classic is a, is a style of the house. Yes. And so talk to us. I mean, let's just let's just there's so many questions I want to ask, but let's dive into the house style and dive into what makes this Brut Classic what it is. Talk to us about this unique house style. I, I know uh, now we just start to to sell the Baz. 15. Mm -hmm. But I know in US you you have the last bottle of Baz 14. 14 this, is a very good, very good this, year. And this specific bottle, Nicolas, I, I believe it, it, it this is telling me the disgorgement there correctly, the gorgement cela. So this is no, 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 this is not a disgorge date. Now we put on the back presentation the disgorge date. Uh, yes, 219. So that's always nice to know. So we'll see it right there when it was disgorged. Okay. Yes, yes. But um, uh, one thing is very important. The Brut Classic is very important. The base of the Brut Classic for Alfred Gracien is regularly 50% Chardonnay on mixed Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier 25 and 25. It's not the rule, but it's approximately this for all the cuvées. One thing is very important. We buy the good grapes. And uh, we keep the grapes very separate during the vinification because we have a special vinification for Alfred Gracia. All Alfred Gracian champagne, when the grape juice come at home, at Alfred Gracian's home, yeah. uh, we put immediately the grape juice in oak for fermentation and vinification. This is not only uh, the wine don't stay in wood after fermentation. No, we ferment in wood and all the wine keeps separate because we just spoke together about Philippe Glavier. Philippe yeah. Glavier uh, sell me grapes from Montelon, not from Grand Cru, from Cramont, because he live in Cramont and he keep right. his Cramont for him, but he, he, he <laughs> sell me the grapes from Montelon and we keep the grapes separate for all fermentation and vinification. We and have I think that's, that's important for people to know, Nicolas, because that means it gives you the most amount of options for blending and really making such a precise, precise yes. champagne, right? Yes, true. And uh, because when the wine is in the borough, it stays in the borough for approximately six months. Wow. We ferment in wood and we keep the wine on the sediment. Some house uh, uh, decant the wine just after the fermentation. Alfred Gracian keep the wine on the sediment without batonnage. We never do batonnage. Because when you test this wine, 
the particularity of Alfred Garcia, we, we, we try to keep the wine fresh for a very long time. If we do the batonnage, I think we have more power, more body in the wine, but I think the wine is more heavy. And uh, you know the gourmandise, maybe you can yep. translate for me, because yep. gourmandise in English is very difficult, but it's like me, when I take chocolate, I, I want the second piece on the third piece. I try to do exactly the same for Alfred Grasse and Champagne. Don't stop with one glass. Uh, my boss is have a joke. Uh, he said, uh, a, a good bottle is an empty bottle. I agree. Je suis d'accord. <laughs> I completely agree. Well, Nicola, can you just speak a little bit more? Because I think a lot of the people watching, they might not be as familiar with the term batonnage and that step that, that winemakers make. So can you kind of discuss what batonnage means? Batonnage means to put the, 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 the sediment uh, in suspension in the wine every 15 days or every week, depend the, the people they decide. But here we, wa we wait, the wine go clear for a very long time. And when we, you, you look the, 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 the wine in the bottle, you can imagine with filtration, but we are without filtration. But uh, we, we, we think, it, you feel the wine have filtration, but the wine is very clear. But we keep the sediment in the wine because we work 100% in oak for Alfred Grasse and Champagne. And we don't want, when you make this with your wine, we just feel the oak. No, it's very, oak is very delicate. Yes. Oak yes. must be support the wine, but not change the wine or take right. place. And right. with the sediment we keep in the bottom, we cut the wood flavor. Mm. If we decant mm. too early, the wine, if we, we, we decant, if we separate the, 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 the sediment on the wine too early, after we, we leave the wine in the bottle and you feel oak very, very strong. Yeah. On champagne, yeah. you, 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 we never forget in champagne, we do a second fermentation in the bottles. And during this process, during the, this second fermentation, uh, you develop the flavor. And the flavor you want or the flavor you don't want. And I don't want wood flavor very strong. I, I support the wine with wood, but if, when you make this, if you don't know, you can forget. Right. This well, is very, very important. And I think that's so unique because I believe that, that you, and it's just you and Krug, you two are the only ones that do full fermentation, that, that primary fermentation in oak for every single one of your wines. Yes, if you buy Cuvée Paradis, not, I can't say Cuvée Paradis is the best one, but I, I think Cuvée Paradis is a special bottle yes. with a special blend. Uh, with only Grand Cru and Premier Cru. Or if you bought uh, Alfred Gracian Brut Classic with the three grapes, you bought wine, ferment, and uh, uh, vinification in wood. This is very important. And one thing very important for Alfred Gracian, because I said we won't keep the fresh wine. One thing very important for me, for Alfred Gracian's style, we never do malolactic fermentation. I can explain. Because malolactic fermentation, you change acid malic in acid lactic. On acid malic, you have uh, uh, apple acid, lactic, milk acid, mm -hmm. and you can imagine after this fermentation, you lose your acidity. But we think this acidity keeps the wine fresh for a long time. You limit oxidation without malolactic fermentation. We keep natural acidity. And for this reason, now you can test a bottle from Harvest 14 and you forget uh, the wine of uh, six or seven years. Yeah. This and, and that is, that is Nicola, that is such an important fact. And, and people listening at home, you know, um, in California, where most of you are watching, uh, we have a lot of, of, of um, Chardonnay in California is mostly always goes through mallow. And so there's a lot of people that don't like California Chardonnay because it's very buttery, right? That lactic, that creaminess. And, and a lot of Chardonnay does that. Whereas here, we preserve that acid, we preserve the freshness. So you're not getting this change in kind of manipulation. You're getting the purity of the fruit, the purity of the wine, and that's what's speaking, not these kind of secondary things. And same with oak. And I think for the most part, they, these are all used barrels, aren't they? About five or six times? Yes, never knew one. No. Uh, the yield of the barrel have around uh, 16, 17 years. 
Wow. Because the, the new one have five years, but the old one have 25 years. The yield is around 15 years. So never new oak. When do you decide, Nicola, which which or does it does it make a difference when to put certain wines in a barrel that's maybe 25 years old versus a barrel that's 10 years old? Is there a dec uh, decision or do uh, they all similar? No, no, because I, I yeah, because uh, you you must understand in Champagne region we have an association winemaker uh, with Mouet et Chandon uh, okay. and over, and we spoke together because uh, the the technical person can speak easier uh, mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes the, the the seller have an idea is different, but we speak very uh, different. Uh, what the question? Excuse me. Oh, just why? If you make a decision to no, put well, someone. Yes, yes, excuse me. Yes, and I remember. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, when I spoke with my colleague about that, some people or uh, some house of champagne. Uh, working wood decide this wood is good for this Chardonnay, mm. this borrow is good for this Pinot Noir, or this borrow is good for this uh, Pinot Meunier. But for Alfred Grasse, it's very different. You must imagine we have more thousand borrow in the share. This is very strong because I think we are the third share in Champagne. If we speak in volume, the bigger is Krug. The second one, I think, is Bollinger. And mm. we are the third share in Champagne in small borrow. And in volume, I speak in volume because you can yeah. have house like Red Rare have a, have a food or an over. But in small borrow, I think we are the third share. But you must imagine, I try to mix a maximum my borrow. Because if I buy borrow to La Chablisienne, we, we buy borrow after four, five wine to La Chablisienne. If I, I don't want the new one, is not new, five years old, but the new old one, <laughs> uh, right. uh, not going the same cuvee. I try to, to have the maximum diversity in my share, and I don't put uh, Chardonnay from Minister Roger or Chardonnay from Avis in the same style of wood. Mm. I, I mix I mix directly when the grape juice come. Gotcha. So that way you can really, one won't stand out in a way more than the other. So we have this nice melange, this nice mix. Yes, to really create yes that like a blend. Yep, like, a blend. like the blend. So talk to us about um, the blend and, and how you, you really have folks and why have we decided that 50, 25, 25? How did that become the regla or the general rule? Uh, if I speak with my uh, sincerely, you know, sincerely is okay. Mm -hmm. um, we start uh, the blend with Mr. Dupre. I don't know if you know my boss, Mr. Yes. Dupre. Uh, we have a very nice relation together. And he, he speak about, with me about what he wants in five, 10 years, what he needs. Mm -hmm. If he needs more vintage, if he needs more blanc de blanc, if he needs more uh, 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 paradis brut or rosé. And after, I, with this, I can start to work because mm. with the quantity or the volume of the vintage or the Cuffe Paradis I must do, I, I look if I have enough for the Brut Classic because mm. one thing is very important is the Brut Classic. Yes. Because do a vintage for the Cuvée Paradis, I take the best cru, the best borrow, the best village, yeah. the best borrower, the and best I, I, do some, <laughs> I, I do something very good. But one thing for me is very important to is make a good brew classic every yeah, year. Every year. This is very important. Right. And if I have not enough to do uh, a lot of bottle of Cuvée Paradis, a lot of bottle of vintage, I said to Mr. Dupre, no, it's not possible to do that this year. Mm -hmm. I can do that. And we work together with this. After right. we test by Mar, because each Mar, one mile in Champagne is 4,000 kilos. We present 25 hectoliters of wine. Each mile, we, we keep separate for six months. And yeah. during this six months, we invite the grower to test their mile. And mm. this is very, very important because at this time, I can speak with the grower. We make a group, of course. It's more difficult now, but you know why. But uh, we make a group. You your many sorge is very good but maybe you cut your grapes too early mm. if we test this one we have more maturity i prefer this one 
or sometimes it's different. You take your grapes with too much maturity for me. I have not enough acidity. I prefer if you cut your grapes early, but mm -hmm. we can speak together. But it's not because it's many sur Roger, it don't go immediately in the vintage or in special cuvee. After we, we test each mar. And before we do the blend, we test each bowl. But I make a, a, a rep representativity of this mar. And after I decide if it can go in the vintage, if, uh, if it can go in Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc, or if it can go in the cuvee parallel. But it's a, it's a work for maybe four, four months. Wow. But if you go at home, if you will go at home and we test together, I hear you comment uh, because uh, we are a small company. I'm alone to do that. And it's very interesting. It's a boring job to, uh, if you buy a bottle of Petrus and you drink alone, it's very boring. If yeah. you buy a bottle of Petrus and you, you drink with your friend, it's a good time. Yes. It's exactly the same for me in the share. I, I hear the comment of the customer. I hear the comment of my world. I hear the comment, of course, of my father. It's very, very important for me because uh, before I do the wine with him, and uh, with him, no, now I do the wine with him, and before he do the wine with me. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, the comment of my father is very important, but it's something very, very precise, but if I want to say one thing, the big part of my job is make a good wine yes. in harvest time. And after, if you blend good and good, normally is much okay. If you make a mistake during your vinification, you have a big problem. And I think that's so many people kind of don't realize that, right? Of how much you have to do during harvest that vendage and those those decisions that are made then on when to pick the grapes for the right amount of acidity and the right amount of you know expression and sugar and uh you know how you're pressing it when you're pressing it how you're separating it those are such important decisions and they might seem so small but they affect the outcome no so i i take my decision of course we we uh, during the harvest time we visit all grower work with Alfa Gracia because we must uh, have the ambience of the house of a uh, grower house. This is very important. If we uh, we must look the quality of the grapes uh, when they pick, uh, how they press. This is very important. But when we take the decision for the blend, we take the decision only in March April. This is now. This yeah. is now because you uh, sometimes we we can feel a very good grapes on the press. And uh, we are surprised of the, of the quality. And you, you understand what I mean? Yeah. Pouvez, uh, I can say in French, excuse me for this. You uh, can see very good grapes, sometimes, and a bit disappointed in the tonneau and inversely. So yeah. this is only in March, April, we take decisions for the blend. Right, because you can taste them at the beginning and they, they taste very good, but then that can change. and. Um, you know, I mean, and that's interesting, right? Because you get the juice, you, you pressed it, and then you're putting them in the barrels. But at that time, you still don't know if they're going to be good enough for this or that, correct? So you may end up yes. having some that it doesn't work. Yes, but uh, you must understand uh, some grower work with my father. And uh, uh, we have a very, very, very long, cheap relation with the grower. And what, this is one of this is very important. I said, you can make a good wine with bad grapes. Right. And uh, uh, if I visit the grower in harvest time, but I visit the grower in the year, just to take care of the uh, grandfather or take care of the baby just uh, mm -hmm. was born. Uh, it's not only business, of course. We have a business because you know the grapes are very expensive in Champagne. This is a business, but for me, it's not only business. All small things is very important. I spoke with you about Philippe Glavier. I I practice motorcycle with him, uh, with an yeah, over. Show, uh, show show your shirt. Show your yes. shirt that you're wearing. It's for everybody. Uh, uh, um, maybe American. <laughs> You need what is is there Ilya is there is there a group in in Champagne that you call yourselves you Harley Riders? 
Uh, it's fun. Uh, no, because it's fun. Because it's, I have two passions, I can say. Free yeah. one, free one. Three. Uh, the first one is wine, of yes, course. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, the, the second is motorcycle, and the third is uh, video, cinema. Okay. Me, I, I love this. But uh, yeah. I have, uh, I, uh, uh, we have a mo moto not, not motorcycle club, but association. Okay. Because it's very different. Yes. Motorcycle club is uh, bad guys. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. And uh, our group is Indians. It's fun because I, I ride Arle Davinson and my group is Indians. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, it, it's, it's cool that we, our, our American motos, have uh, come to No, you. but with some uh, friend, we, we uh, invite for a barbecue. Uh, we can practice uh, petanque. But only for me, buy grabs is not uh, only a business. Right. Is I, I love to do that because we have the the we have the the relationship with the grower are very important for me. Well, I think that I mean that's evident, right? Because if it were just about the business, you would be producing a million bottles, right? But you're doing no, no, no. I know no, you're no. not. Say no. C'est c'est seulement trois cents, n'est-ce pas? Was oui, it uh, oui. yeah, three thousand? Yeah. That's it. But I'm saying if it were only about Le Monet, voila, it would be more like a million bottles. But because it's really about the relationship, it's about the qualité, the quality, the wine, the expression, uh, it's a lot less. I mean, it is amazing to think that you have such a small output. But, you know, when, when I talk to people about your champagne here, which is why I was so glad to put it in the club, it's not, it's not known, right? You know, when I go to France, every time I'm in France, every time I go to Le Printemps in Champagne, Gracien, 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 Gracien. Tout le monde. Everybody loves Gracien. In France, I go and everybody knows it. It's a gourmand. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a you know, a, a, an experiential wine, but people don't know about it here. And so it's been wonderful to show people what a champagne with oak can be like. Because in America, you know, there's kind of this, this um, negative interpretation of wine that has been vinified in oak because a lot of times, what do you get? You get just the oak, you don't get the fruit, you don't get the freshness and it, and it, it changes so much. Whereas with, with the Cru Classique, you get the freshness, you get the fruit, but I think you get this kind of graciousness, this kind of this roundness without being heavy. Wouldn't you say it's not heavy, but it's full. It's very, very full in the mouth. For me, it's important. Yeah, one thing is very interesting uh, for me when, when you spoke is full. Yes, c'est ça. But, but fresh yes. and elegant. Yes. And uh, one thing very important sometimes, excuse me for the, the man, uh, watch me to the, tonight. Yeah. But one thing is very important for my father. He said, we make champagne for women. What I say, because a, a woman buy the bottle of champagne. A woman loves champagne, and the man with, uh, with uh, a man, uh, not with a woman, but with his wife, uh, with uh, uh, a good com with a good company, <laughs> start with a bottle of champagne. And is uh, the uh, woman uh, public is very important. And for this, I'm we uh, for for uh, this is a Fred Grassin style. I don't say we have woman style, but the wine is stay fresh, very fruity, yes. accessible. Yeah accessible because some wine have a lot of body. I love this wine too, but you drink one glass or two glass and you won't switch for another more fresh. But with this style of wine, you can stay a night, no okay. problem. Well, that's, I think, a great point. You get everything you want. You get freshness. You get the body. You get the fruit. It's, 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 uh, comme, comme, comme vous dites en français, the total package. It's the total package. C'est le total, n'est-ce pas? Oui, je ne sais pas si ça me fait plaisir ce que vous dites, mais ce n'est pas <laughs> On divine. Um, but so I think it's amazing. Can you talk a little bit about the age? Because I think that's another thing that's amazing is, is let's kind of recap. This is what would be considered the entry bottle, right? This is, this is, the, this is the entry. This is the, this is the base wine. Yes. The, it's the base wine, right? It's, it's the yes. entrance to the house of Gracien. Yet this does not taste like any entry-level champagne anybody would find at the supermarché anyone would find at the store this is 
such a high level of champagne that, you know, I, I, like I said to you, most popular bottle in, in the club this month. And, and, you know, I would put it up against any, and well, of course it would beat any, any big house, you know, their entry level. And, you know, there's so many of those facets that go into that, but talk to me about the long aging, because I believe this aged about five years or so in the bottle. Uh, uh, Buzz of 14. Yeah. Uh, in bottle 15. The wine you drink now, six years in a bottle. Amazing. Normally, the, now we sell, uh, and we have an order ready for U US now. And uh, this is uh, the next one. This is the Buzz 15. But now you, say, you sell the Buzz 14. But you must imagine six years in the bottles. Normally, a new vintage is minimum 15 months. Right. This is the rule in Champagne. Right. The rule in Champagne is 15 months in the bottle, and after you can sell the bottles. But with our, with our production, it's not possible to no. wait only 15 months because we have 62% of Grand Cru Premier Cru. We work in oak, and of course, we have a tannin in the wine, and tannin is antioxidant. We don't do malolactic fermentation. We have a little bit more acidity, to right. keep the fresh wine yes. and acidity is antioxidant. If tomorrow I sell a bottle after 20 months, 25 months or legislation, 15 mm -hmm. months, you can drink, it's too no. young. Yeah. And uh, when I stay, it I stayed the first time 15, I feel it's too young. But yeah. of course my boss say, sometime we must buy or we must sell the bottle. Excuse me, Nicola, but we can keep the bottle <laughs> 10 years in the cellar uh, for all the cuvee. But uh, one thing is very important, but this is important for you too, because when you have the wine at home is ready to drink, but you can keep. Mm. If my boss hear me, he say no. Said to the people, drink a bottle or buy a new one. <laughs> it's a <laughs> joke, of course, excuse me, but you can keep, if you have a bottle of Alfred Gracien in your cave, Brut Classic, in good condition, you can, uh, you can keep 10 years. It's not a problem. This is wine from Champagne. This is not only Champagne. For me, Champagne is a second uh, level Wait. because it's a, it's a Nova fermentation in a bottle. Right. But the buzz of a good champagne is a good wine. Yes. And, and this is wine from champagne. And that's that's one thing, Nicola, that I'm a big fan of. So I, I tell people, I say, if you want to know if this is a good wine, first and foremost, because you have to have good wine to make good champagne, I say, let the bubbles, if you can resist drinking the whole bottle, let, let the bubbles go flat and taste the wine. If this tastes like a good wine, yes, you have a good champagne. Yes. Yes, and if you forget your glass, maybe uh, one hour on the table, mm -hmm. after you can start to feel the brioche, you can start yeah. to feel the coffee, coffee torrefaction. The, mm -hmm. the, in your glass, you have, yeah. the, the, you have wine. Mm -hmm. And now I, uh, I test uh, 2007 in bottle in eight, 13 years in a bottle. On you don't feel old. But no. one thing is important if we speak about Alfred Garcia uh, uh, bottles. Mm -hmm. We have a gamme of uh, uh, seven champagne. The first one is a Brut Classic, and we have two, uh, and we have a Brut Nature. Brut Nature is the same quality of wine of the Brut Classic, but we keep one year more in in the cave mm -hmm. to have more maturity and right. to switch the sugar. sugar yeah. After we have the Brut Classic Rosé. Is a little bit younger. Uh, Brut Classic Rosé now is Baz 16 because mm. I want the red fruit in the wine. Mm. It's impossible. Uh, if I keep too long the Brut Classic Rosé, we change the style and the color change and I want something very uh, uh, a summer wine. I don't, yeah. what, what can I say? <laughs> a, a lot of fruit, red fruit. Yeah. This is what, uh, what, what, what I want. After we have a bottle of Grand Cru, uh, Blanc de Blanc, uh, the base of the wine now is a vintage uh, 15 2, and we use the uh, six Grand Cru from La Côte des Blancs. Benil sur Auger, yep. Avis, Chouilly, Auger, Cramont, and Wari. The six so, Grand Cru of for, La Côte des Wari. And everybody listening at home, so in, in Champagne, the Côte des Blancs is considered the best area for Chardonnay. And so Nicolas, he just mentioned those top villages that are Grand Cru in the Côte Blanc that are just producing beautiful fruit. So if you want to taste an incredible representation of the Côte Blanc, 
representation of the best grand cru, that's the champagne he's talking about. Yes, and uh, one thing is special because uh, my grandfather, just for a friend or for his pleasure, uh, take two bowl every year. Mm. One borrow from Cramont, one mm. borrow from Meni sur Roger, he mix, and now we have the bottle on the ground. And we are, this is exactly the same philosophy, but we don't have two cru, we have six grand cru now. Uh, now I have some bottle of my grandfather in the library, uh, mm. 62, 64, 66, 69, 70, uh, 75, and 76. And You're going to drink, invite me for when you open those up, correct? I'll, I'll join you. <laughs> they are crazy, they are crazy, because this oh. is wine, you can feel the maturity, of course. of course. If I say he's young, no, he's not a young wine, you can feel the maturity, but you, you, you feel his wine and you feel uh, the maturity, but not oxidation, mm. not maderization. Mm. I, I don't know the word in English, excuse me. When you feel the madder, no, but not yeah, on the but wine. Uh, yeah. The wine is very Shared. gold, very gold, but not uh, old, not right. uh, not brown. Right. But the wine is crazy, and uh, the philosophy of the Blanc de Blanc and Frère Gracia is exactly the same. But my grandfather before used two Grand Cru, and we use six Grand Cru. And after so we I... have we have the Cuvée Paradis. Yep. This is only Grand Cru and Premier Cru. On the, on the Cuvée Paradis Blanc or Cuvée Paradis Rosé, we switch the Pinot Meunier. Why? Because we have a Cuvée Vintage, Classic Vintage, 07, I test now. And when you, uh, the people before uh, with my father's wine test the Vintage or test the Cuvée Paradis, they don't know if they prefer the, sometimes the Vintage, sometimes the Cuvée Paradis, and we want to make something very special with the Cuvée Paradis, and for this reason, we switch the Pinot menu. Yeah. And the wine have more body, more strong. And after, very, very classic one is the, uh, the vintage, I test now. And one thing very important, if you look the neck of the bottle, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, we use, you, you, if you look your bottles, this is, uh, you have a back coron. Mm -hmm. And we use caps for the second fermentation. For this bottle, it's impossible to, to put caps on this bottle. We uh, use coke for the second fermentation. That's and really coke, important to know because most yeah. people in Champagne, so um, everybody listening, what Nicolas is saying is, is to when the bottle becomes fizzy in the cellars, when it's lying on its side, that most people will be using crown caps or you know beer caps, right? So they just put that on there. But because of the bottle shape and what they use, it must have a cork inside of it during that secondary fermentation, which is a a lot and more we, expensive, a lot more time than everything else. And we, when we, when we extract the sediment, when we disgorge uh, the bottle, uh, we change the cork for a new one. Yeah. But when we, when we extract the sediment, we test each bottle because we can have a cork flavor, yeah. and we take the risk. The, the the customer don't take the risk. We take the risk of really? the. Of, of the, so after the first you, cork. With the first cork. So after every time you disgorge, you taste every bottle to make sure it's not. Yes, because wow. when you extract the sediment, you have some bubbles go outside. Of course. And with the finger, we test the bubbles. Wow. Only, only this. And we, if the, 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 the man disgorge tastes 100 bottles, 100 bottles are very good. And you have one is different. It's very easy to extract. Very, very easy. Incredible. But one thing is very important. With, cat, with cork, if you look the cork, uh, you have a lot of cavity in the cork. Mm. And uh, with the pression, because we have around five, six bar in the bottle of champagne, with the pression on the cavity in the cork, the oxygen can go inside the bottles. And when we test the wine with cork, or exactly the same wine with corn caps, we think corn caps is ready to drink, and with cork, you must drink quickly. Uh, mm. No, excuse me. With crown caps is ready to drink, but and with coke you can keep very long time because the wine is really more fresh. Yep. And in this one we use the free grapes. For this reason, it's different with the cuvee paradis, and uh, we use uh, uh, around sixty percent of chardonnay for uh, for each cuvee. And sometimes is more pinot noir, sometimes is more pinot meunier. Mm. Depend depend the year. 
And uh, if you look a bottle of the Cuvée Paradis, because uh, the people sometimes give me one question, you use Coke for vintage, not for the Cuvée Paradis, but the neck of the Cuvée Paradis is smaller. Mm. And we control the oxidation with the, the, the volume can, of oxygen can go inside. And so I think that's a big part of kind of what you're saying is you want to control the oxygen that gets in before. So that way it doesn't end up becoming a too oxidized wine. We allow that process to happen sooner to maintain the freshness later. Is that correct, Nicola? Yes. And for me, one thing is important. You, we test the wine if it is mature, if you oxidate. And mm -hmm. the texture of the wine is very important. Yes. And yes. when you test a bottle of Alfred Gracian Champagne, the texture is not, I can say always, but uh, normally it's very creamy. Yes. You have, you well, feel the bubbles, but not aggressive. Mm, and very I think that's, that's a big point. And I think so many people who think they don't like champagne, they don't like that uh, aggressiveness. They, it, they don't like how much acid. And what they don't realize is a lot of that acid is coming from very short aging, you know, very kind of poor quality of grapes. Uh, and, and, you know, the way they, they make it. Whereas with this, we have long aging, we have the natural acid, we have high quality grapes from very near, you know, the Gracian house. Uh, and we have this oak aging that, that just, that really beautifully does it. And then the cork, I mean, it's the- Only, <laughs> I think, uh, uh, Excuse me, it's not to be nice. I think you see me, I hope. No, no, we see uh, you. <laughs> okay, but, uh, um, all the small things is very important. Yes. In a in way or in another way. If you want to make a good or normal or bad wine. Mm -hmm. If you go in, all is very important. And one thing is very important too, is expedition liquor. Because yes. you know, when we speak about the Brut Nature, or when we speak about the Brut Classic, one thing different, in the Brut Nature, we have zero gram of sugar, two gram maximum. Right. but this is residual sugar right. and in the brut classic we we use sugar to balance the acidity on right. the on the on the sugar for alfred gracian champagne we do the 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 liquor and i have i have a solera okay and i use a solera to mix with canned sugar and mm. i have very strong identity of my liquor and this is one thing very very important and i use the same liquor for all the QV. Why? Because if you pass Brut Classic, Blanc de Blanc, a bottle of vintage, you keep the style. Yes. You have the you have the line of the QV. You 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 can feel you change of the the quality of the wine change, the aging change, yes. but the style of the house stay with expedition liquor is one thing very important. And before expedition. We keep minimum the bottles, minimum three months in our cellar because oh. the liquor must marry with the wine. Yes. If we disgorge and we test the bottle immediately after, you have sugar and champagne. If we wait three months, the liquors uh, start to be married with the wine. If we keep six months, is better. But yes. uh, we try to do the best. But I said all the small things give something better to show sure. yeah and i think that i i think it's just so amazing i mean even the fact that somebody can put the brut classique in their cellar and it'd be beautiful for 10 years no one can really say that i mean you look at any of the big houses and they say for their non-vintage champagnes poison drink within three years right it's you know meant to be drunk right now you can't drink it later but this is one you can, I say, drink now and drink later, right? Maintenant oh, and yes. stuff. Sure. I, yeah. I must say drink now, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> because it's good for me. It's yes. good for my boss. <laughs> this is a joke. But uh, if you are a wine lover, you have something uh, very interesting to keep our champagne. Yes. Absolutely. Very, very, very. Well, uh, no, I think it's just, I think it's amazing. The, the method, I think even the the amount of work and consideration you have for the Le Coeur d'Expedition, for the dosage is, is so incredible. And, and on average for, the, for, the, for that, for the dosage, 
is it reserve? So it's a re Solera reserve wine. So how far this is a Solera. are we this going? This is a Solera. We are, oh. we are Solera. I have a tank with 200 hectoliters. Every year I take 10% of this one on the quality of this Solera. is 65% Chardonnay, 35% mm. Pinot Noir, only Grand Cru and Premier Cru. This is Cuvée Paradis Solera. Amazing. Amazing. This is Cuvée Paradis Solera. And in this one, Wow. Uh, the Brutlatic, you test, you see me, or maybe I try to switch on the light, or uh, okay. I go, okay. I go inside. Excuse me. Oh, that's okay. c'est parfait comme ça. I go inside home. <laughs> maybe it's better. <laughs> it's so lovely out there, though. I'll tell you, it's it's beautiful getting to see those vineyards because we can't come see you in person. So excuse me. <laughs> Pas de souci. I know everybody at home is enjoying this. I hope everybody is tasting this is enjoying this as much as me. It really is so hard not to keep drinking this, Nicola, and I have to work for another uh, 13 hours today. But this wine is just, you know, at the end of the day for me, when I sell wine and I, and I choose selections for the club and for the bar, you know, I think of what is, what brings pleasure, right? What is pleasurable to drink? What is just enjoying and delicious? At the end of the day, if the wine isn't delicious or pleasurable to drink, there's no point in drinking it. It can be, it can be, as as mentally you know looping as possible but if it isn't delicious when you pour it in your glass and it hits your lips then why bother right and you can feel because uh, uh, this is wine you eat yes. you make this yes we continue this is very long very yes and uh, and uh, excuse my <laughs> i have a problem <laughs> uh, uh, uh and in the brew classic you must understand this the base wine is 14 you test right. but uh with 40 percent of reserve wine from a perpetual reserve and how it's how old thing. is that perpetual reserve how long does it go back to my father started his perpetual reserve in uh, 197 eight years approximately wow. But maybe you have 0.1% of 1998, but uh, you must understand in the 14, you have uh, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine and more. And in, in, a, in another, in a, uh, the next one, you have the base of the, this one. Yep. And when we switch the QV, uh, of course, sometimes you can prefer the base 15, you can prefer the base 14, depending on your, your style. But uh, you don't lose uh, the, the, the style. This is no. one thing very important. So I think, again, everybody hearing this, he, Nicola continues to add to the complexity of this wine, which how we are able to sell it for the price we sold it for. Nicola, it's moins cher. It's too little, this bottle. It is so good. You know, 40 good balance on quality. Very old. Oh, you know, we're getting 40% reserve wine in here, perpetual reserve wine. And then in the dosage, we're getting this beautiful Solera reserve as well. So, I mean, it is as complex of a non-vintage champagne I think you can get. And I think that's what I love is it really is this gourmand, this this full, this, this chewy champagne without being heavy, this full body without being fat, right? I mean, it's just this beautiful champagne that at 11 o'clock in the morning, you can you can drink. And then at, um, what, 8.52, you can also uh, drink at night. At nine uh, in the evening, you can too. Uh, and maybe at <laughs> minuit aussi, you know, <laughs> <laughs> matin, n'importe, n'importe quand. It's just perfect. So, um, avec I, avec one thing important. Yes. Avec Gracien, tout va bien. Tout va bien. With Gracien, it's all good. I love that. <laughs> Gracien, tout va bien. And it's very true. So, Nicola, it's been such a pleasure to have you. Um, again, to anybody in our club, anybody watching, um, we are just so honored to feature Alfred Gracien in our club, their Brut Classique, which, which performs double its price. It really, really does. Um, and I know that so many people who do blind tastings, Nicola, that's their favorite. I mean, over so many different houses, so many different vintages because of what you have created on your father, what he created, your grandfather and your great grandfather. I mean, it's been this beautiful succession. So thank you thank so you. much thank for you. being thank with you very us much. today. It's really been such a pleasure. Thank you very much. What well, can I say more? One thing, <laughs> stay healthy, drink champagne. <laughs> yes. And th thank you very much for your uh, help, 
thank you for your French. And uh, I can say I don't see all the person, but uh, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, very you everybody. Much. And again, if you want any more bottles, I think we have a few remaining. Feel free to contact us and we'd love to send you a bottle there. So, encore une fois, merci, bonsoir, Nicolas. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's been such a privilege. And, à bientôt, uh, j'espère. À bientôt, j'espère aussi. En okay. France ou aux États-Unis, mais France, à bientôt, j'espère. Which, Nicolas, when was the last time you were in the United States? Uh, the last time, maybe uh, four years ago now, three years oh. ago. But Pas the last time is with my family. But one thing very special for me, I want to show to my daughter one time New York. Oh. And uh, I was with my children uh, in New York and a uh, oh. happy guy. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we will have you when you, we are going to make sure that we get you in California, California and get you at Fizz. And I look forward to visiting you in France and uh, it'll be a wonderful time. I was one time in California. Very nice. And I will, I hope I, I go again. Thank you. It's coming back. I will make sure you are brought back with, uh, I'll talk with uh, the other Nicola and we will make sure it happens. So wonderful. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Merci Bonsoir. Beaucoup. Thank you everybody. Cheers.